Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you may be surprised to know that the Radeon RX 6400 here, despite being one of the most entry level AMD graphics cards available at the moment, supports ray tracing. I don't know about you, but I trade this feature for hardware encoding any day because given the choice between recording gameplay internally with Relive Capture or playing RT supported games at 4 frames per second, I'd not hesitate to choose the former. That said, I can't help but appreciate the inclusion of this unexpected option. You've got to admire the optimism. There's no doubt that ray tracing does work on this card. If I cycle through a few screenshots here, you can see that the difference between the standard and ray traced images are night and day. Some games implement it better than others, that's for sure, which ultimately leads to the performance differences between RT on and off scenarios varying on a game by game basis. Let's see what sacrifices need to be made then to experience ray traced visuals and playable frame rates simultaneously with this sub £200 graphics card, if that's possible. Cyberpunk 2077 first of all. This runs fine with ray tracing turned off. Your best bet with the RX 6400 is the low settings and FSR will definitely help out in terms of maintaining a solid frame rate, especially in those busier downtown areas. Crowd density and texture quality is also low and I've also kept FSR off for this gameplay test. The experience is fairly solid, especially if like me you have a PCI Express 4.0 system. I'm using my Core i3-12300 with 16 gigs of 3200 MHz dual channel RAM. So far, so good. If we turn on all the ray tracing options, including changing the lighting quality to maximum or psycho as it's known here, then yeah, you've got no chance of running the game smoothly. This was to be expected though, I'm sure you'll agree. Arguably it's the ray traced reflections option that looks the best out of all the other options. So if we turn off everything else and just leave the reflections enabled from the in-game menu, then we do get a better looking game and a slightly higher frame rate. I didn't bother benchmarking the game with RT set to max because it was unplayable. It still is really, but this result is important when compared to the next test, which will see our frame rate go from bad to not as bad. I won't say good because there are a few hiccups, but the 30 FPS barrier can be broken. To do this, we need to enable Ultra Performance FSR. This is the most intense FSR mode, meaning that it will have the most impact on the visual quality. The game is being rendered at an incredibly low resolution, but it's not totally eyesight destroying. Like before, we only have RT reflections enabled. We could drop to 900 or 720p and keep FSR enabled, but that would make things nearly impossible to see. To be honest, ray tracing probably isn't something you'd want to enable with an RX 6400 anyway, but I find it fascinating that it can be done. This is just for a bit of fun after all. Minecraft is up next. This is the Windows version, of course. I've added this because with RT on it actually looks pretty good. Charming is probably the right word. Some of the maps look incredible with ray tracing enabled. Under normal circumstances, with the graphics set to fancy and all the bells and whistles enabled, Minecraft will have no issues. I've uncapped the frame rate and stretched the window to full screen in order to fill out the display and run it with at least 60 FPS for the purpose of comparison. Keeping all the fancy stuff enabled and turning ray tracing on is a disaster once again. It needs no benchmark because as you can probably see by the MSI Afterburner overlay, the frame rate barely scrapes double digits. What can we do to alleviate this then? Well I found during my testing that even disabling fancy graphics and turning anti-aliasing down as well as decreasing the render distance doesn't do much for the performance. In fact the game still runs pretty poorly. It's a little bit better but it's not really what I or I'm sure any of you would call playable. Each map will of course vary but 30 FPS is an impossibility at 1920 by 1080. It was then I decided to enable AMD RSR or Radeon Super Resolution before setting the native screen res to 720p. Here the game is rendered at 720p but upscaled to our display's native output. That's putting it simply. It looks sharper than 720p would ordinarily and best of all we are getting at least 30 frames per second. Perhaps that's why AMD felt confident in adding ray tracing support for this card because the likes of FSR and RSR can make RT possible 
if you don't mind visual quality sacrifices, sometimes fairly substantial visual quality sacrifices. The 6400 had little trouble achieving over 30 FPS with this first Nvidia map, but I decided to switch to a more open, built up environment to see how things fared. This medieval map is absolutely stunning to look at, but it does run slightly worse than the indoor map showcase just now. 30 FPS is definitely more difficult for the 6400 to constantly maintain, but the visual quality and overall beauty of the map still comes across even at an upscaled 720p. This video was due to come out yesterday, but I got so distracted by just walking around these maps that I missed my own deadline. It's happened before, and it'll probably happen again. Finally then we have Quake 2, or Quake 2 RTX. This is a game with a 1000 FPS cap it would seem, and with the rendering mode set to OpenGL by default there are no issues with performance. The RX 6400 will play this game at over 900 FPS all day long. That certainly sounded strange when it came out of my mouth, but you'll find that most modern graphics cards will present no problems with this title. That said, it's surprising how much performance is impacted by switching the rendering mode to RTX. MSI Afterburner also decided to give up at this point by coincidence, but you can see by the built-in FPS counter in the top right-hand corner that we're hitting less than 20 FPS pretty much all of the time. Less than 15. We've lost over 900 frames per second by toggling one switch. That said, all the graphical options are set to their respective highest as well to get the full effect of the enhanced visuals. We can actually keep things as they are in terms of the aforementioned visual settings. Quake 2 RTX has a built-in res scale hotkey, meaning I can hit a button on the keyboard to turn the resolution scale down in an instant. This gets us a quick look at how performance differs at varying internal resolutions. Instead of FSR, RSR or simply changing the native output, I decided to switch to 35% render scale and before you know it we were running with at least 60 FPS. Things still look somewhat okay and the game isn't as blurry or pixelated as it sounds considering how we're running it, but I definitely advise playing about with some of the advanced quality options too, as you might not have to make as much of a resolution sacrifice. Overall I think you can probably guess the conclusion, yes the RX 6400 can do ray tracing, but in order to get even anywhere near playable frame rates you have to make some serious alterations to the quality of your favourite games. I do find it interesting and sort of ambitious, but at the same time I'd rather have a card that was a little more feature rich in other departments. As someone who sees ray tracing as an option best reserved for the fastest graphics cards available, I certainly wouldn't use it here, and I don't think many 6400 owners would. I could be wrong, of course, and the option is always there if you want it. That's all for this one then, if you enjoyed it leave a like down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.